we start chapter gravitation up to now we have studied newton's law of attraction that is newton's law of gravitation <coughs> also we have studied earth's gravitational force earth's gravitational acceleration that is acceleration due to gravity change in acceleration due to gravity with respect to earth surface as we go in height also inside the earth that is in depth okay so value of g does not remain constant it changes okay that part also we studied in last lecture also we studied difference between mass and weight okay that part also that much part we carry out up to last lecture now in this lecture we have to study next topic that is the free form okay <coughs> now we study earth's gravitational force okay in that we have studied that earth has an attractive power okay it apply that attractive power on any other massive body okay due to that what happen that object fall or it moves towards earth center okay that's we call earth's gravitational force due to the earth's gravitational force object move toward the earth simply if we throw a one stone in upside okay then what happen as we throw that stone upside then simultaneously gravitational force act on that stone due to that gravitational force what happen its velocity continuously goes on reducing okay initially its velocity is high but now as we throw it upside then it moves against the gravitational force and due to that what happen continuously as it goes on some higher distances or height its velocity continuously goes on reducing okay and after reaching some particular height its velocity become zero and it fall on the earth surface okay so is due to the attractive power of the earth object generally what happen fall on the earth surfaces now we have to see next topic that is the free fall okay fall but how free now suppose i take this pen okay and i catch this pen over at this distance now here this is stable now okay its velocity is zero it's not in motion because now in this position also earth's gravitational force act on this pen okay but now what i do i apply some force okay which is opposite to the earth gravitational force due to that it is stable in this condition okay so that is why it remains stationary at this point so now what happen if i remove this hand from my pen from this pen okay if i remove my hand from this pen at that time we know that this pen will fall towards on the earth surface okay that is due to the earth gravitational force now here now as pen fall towards earth at that time which forces act on this pen okay first of all we know due to the effect of gravity it fall towards earth okay that one force also due to the presence of air this air tries to resist the downward motion of this pen means air resistance that one force is also present over here okay so due to that what happen object fall but not freely fall we can say it not freely fall free fall means for simply meaning of free fall is what motion of an object due to only gravitational force what only gravitational force but now in this room room condition it is not possible because air is present over here so in surrounding due to surrounding air this air tries to resist the motion of an object okay so we can carry out this experiment in vacuum okay at that time if you remove air from this room at that time whatever the motion produced in this pen that will be 
due to the only earth's gravitational force and due to the only gravitational force motion produced in this pen that motion simply called as a free fall or that case is simply called as a free fall so how can we define free fall simply falling or motion of an object due to the only effect of earth gravitational force then it is called as a free fall okay that is simply definition of free fall now again we have to see initially okay when i kept that object here initially its velocity is how much zero okay if i release my hand then it start to move means initially its velocity is zero now it fall we see the concept of free fall then we have to consider air is not present here means resistance force force is not present here only earth gravitational force is act on this object okay so at that time whatever the acceleration produced in this object when i remove my hand that will be equal to that small g that is acceleration due to gravity we have already studied acceleration due to gravity means simply what acceleration produced in an object due to the earth's gravity that is simply called as acceleration due to gravity here is what happen object is a stationary but due to the earth's gravitational force what happen acceleration produced in this pen initially its velocity is zero as a time passes it goes on increasing okay so change in velocity with respect to time that we simply called as a acceleration so due to the earth's gravitational force what happen acceleration produced in this pen so that acceleration will be equal to g because only force present here is of gravitational force now we have to see in case of a free fall okay newton's law of motion how can be we apply here okay we know in last year in ninth standard chapter first laws of motion in that we study three equation of motion okay first of u is equal to v is equal to u plus at second s is equal to ut plus 1/2 at square and third is v square is equal to u square plus 2 as v is equal to u plus at that gives us relation between velocity and time okay second s is equal to ut plus 1/2 at square this gives us relation between displacement and time and third v square is equal to u square plus 2 as this relation gives us a relation between velocity and displacement okay so simply these are the three equations that we have studied already in last last year okay so now we have to apply this equation for the free falling object okay simply free falling means of only motion of an object under the effect of gravitational force only one force is there that is the gravitational force so for that we have to apply first law of motion that is v is equal to u plus at now suppose we consider gravitational force apply on this object if i move my hand if i remove my hand then free falling of that object will be start but now initial velocity of this object is how much zero and acceleration produced in that object will be equal to what acceleration due to gravity that is this small g so this equation will change initially initial velocity is how much zero and acceleration produced that is nothing but the acceleration due to gravity so this equation will become v is equal to initial velocity zero instead of this a we have to put z so this equation will be v is equal to gt this is the equation of motion for the object which fall freely means under the effect of only gravitational force now we have to see second equation s is equal to ut plus 1/2 at square if you 
calculate displacement, then how we can calculate? That is ut plus one half a t square. Here u is initial velocity is how much again? Zero. And a is how much? G. A is equal to g. So equation will be s is equal to one by two g t square. Okay. That is the second equation of motion that gives us displacement after time t, which having acceleration g. Okay. And then third equation is v square is equal to u square plus two a s. We know for a free falling object, initial velocity is always zero. So zero square is equal to two into acceleration will be g and s. So v square is equal to two g s. That is the third equation of motion for free falling object. Okay. So understood free falling sort simply motion of an object due to only effect of earth gravitational force. Only one force is there. That is the gravitational force. Due to that gravitational force, what motion in an object produced? Okay, so that motion simply called as a free fall, and it is always towards the center of earth. That is why it always fall down. That is why it simply called as a. So next topic we have to see that is gravitational potential energy. Okay, so we know we are already studied up to last classes that is the potential energy. Okay, simply potential energy is what energy stored in an object due to the its particular height. Okay, that much we study up to last classes. Okay, so we studied one formula. Potential energy is nothing but the m g h. Okay, m g h. Where m is what mass of an object, g is what acceleration due to gravity. And h is what height of that object from the surface of Earth. Okay, that is the simply formula for potential energy. Now, if you consider if one object is on the surface of Earth, okay, where on the surface of Earth at that time its height, okay, on its height. H will be equal to zero because that object simply placed on the surface of Earth, so its height is equal to zero. Then its potential energy will be m into z into zero that will be equal to zero. Okay. So simply from that we understood that potential energy stored in an object is a depend on the height. Okay. As height increases, our potential energy is also goes on increasing okay so one another part we have already studied that is earth gravitational acceleration or acceleration due to gravity that is the small g okay so it is small g tells us that okay small g is what earth gravitational acceleration okay if we take any object okay Then I remove my hand. Then ultimately it will be fall on the surface of Earth due to the Earth's gravitation. Okay, and whatever the acceleration produced in an object due to the Earth's gravitational force, that is nothing but the acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration produced in an object due to the gravitational force, that is the small g acceleration due to gravity. We know. Value of g does not remain constant everywhere. Okay, we see three cases. First of all, along the surface of Earth, it not remain same. Earth bulges at equator, so it is less at equator, and Earth flatter at the poles. So that is why value of g is higher at the poles. Okay, so that is the one case. Second case we studied that is inside the Earth means at a depth d. As we go inside the Earth. Then also value of g changes, and now third case that is important that we have to consider here that is along with the height. Okay, as we go above Earth surface, we are already study value of g also decreases. Okay, so we are study in that part of acceleration due to gravity. As we go above from the Earth surface, 
as our height increases, value of g decreases. Okay. So <coughs> what happened now? If we are go higher and higher positions at that time, what happened about this multiplication mg h? Okay. So here, <coughs> as we go above Earth surface, value of g decreases. Okay. Due to that, what happen? Potential energy of an object also decreases. Suppose we are go very high, higher point. Okay, means very high distances. At that time, at one particular point, as we increase height, this value of z will be equal to zero. Will be equal to zero. At that point. We call it infinity. Okay, so at infinity, what happen? Our value of z will be equal to zero. So if g is equal to zero, then no doubt about that, your height is increasing. M remain constant, but your g will be equal to zero. So at that time, at infinity, your g is equal to zero. That is why potential energy. Will be equal to zero because we know as we go from above Earth surface, value of g decreases, and at a point of infinity, g will be equal to zero. And as g is equal to zero, our potential energy will be equal to zero. Okay. So now, Earth's gravitational potential at infinity. Okay. Infinity is equal to how much? Zero. At infinity, its value, gravitational potential, is how much? Zero, because our g become zero. So below distances than infinity, okay? So distances less than infinity, where Earth gravitational force apply force on that particular object. In that distances below infinity, Earth gravitational potential. Is given by g m n divided by r plus h. Okay, where g is universal gravitational constant, capital M is the mass of Earth, small m is the mass of an object, r is the radius of Earth, and h is the height of an object from the surface of Earth. Okay, but here sign is negative. Okay, why negative sign is there? Because at the infinity, at the higher point, its value is how much? Zero. So below that point, whatever the potential of that object have, that we have to consider negative. Because at infinity, higher point, it is how much? Zero. So below that distances, whatever the gravitational potential of that object have, that always consider negative. Okay? Because at infinity, it is zero. And from below infinity, it is less than zero. Okay, so that is why we have to consider it is minus sign. We have to put here, and that is gravitational potential energy. Okay, understood? So now let me see one problem. Okay, so this problem is based on Newton's law of gravitation. Okay, we have studied. Newton's law of gravitation. In this law, Newton tells us that the force of attraction is always present between two massive bodies. Okay, so this law of attraction tells us that the force of attraction between two massive bodies is directly proportional to product of their masses. Okay, and inversely proportional to Square of distance between them. Okay, what directly proportional to product of their masses and inversely proportional to square of distance between them. So this force will be equal. So this force is proportional to m1 m2 divided by d square. Then d is the distance of separation between two massive bodies. So we have to remove this proportionality constant. Then this force will be equal to capital G m1 m2 divided by d 
square a g capital capital g a one m two divided by d square. This is the simple formula to calculate force of attraction that is the gravitational force between two massive bodies. Okay, by using this formula, we have to solve one problem based on Newton's law of attraction. Following is that Mahendra and Virat are sit one meter distance from each other. Okay. Mahendra and Virat are sit two persons one meter distance is between them. Okay. Both having masses respectively 75 kilogram and 80 kilogram. Okay. Then how much force of attraction between them that we have to calculate by using this formula. Okay. We know Newton's law tells us these two massive bodies, Mahindra and Virat, okay, two massive bodies, 75 kilogram and 80 kilogram, situated one meter away from each other, okay. So distance between them is one meter. So we have to calculate force of attraction between them. We know according to Newton's law of gravitation, or this force is equal to capital G M1 M2 divided by R square you may take R or D both notation we can use for the distance ok because we have to represent distance you may take R or D both are equal so R square R is what distance that is what 1 meter ok then this capital G is Earth's gravitational constant it having value 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11 Newton meter square per kilogram square. Okay, so we have m1, m2, also we have r, and we know value of g. So, all these values we have to put here. We know g is 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11 m1 75 m2 80 and distance of separation is equal to. 1 square. After carry out this calculation, you will get answer force of attraction between Mahindra and Virat is 4.002 into 10 raised to minus 7 Newton. Okay. So, this is a simple problem based on Newton's law of gravitation. Okay. So, also more solve problems are given in our textbook. Okay. That the problems you have to try to solve okay if you have any problem then ask me i will tell you what we have to do there but possibly in from next lecture we will start some problems okay one topic is remain that is the escape velocity that we will see and also some problems we will see in next lecture thank you